Hey there everybody, um, this is Chaos back with another video on the Bulldozer Barb. Today we're going to do a commentary video, uh, it's my first one um, of any kind, and it's going to be a full comprehensive tutorial on the build itself. I'm going to try to break it up into a few parts, um, one of which is going to be aimed toward more casual players who don't have a full understanding of the game. Um, one is going to be based on gearing, so if you're looking to start the build, you have a pretty good grasp, um, that would be a good video for you. And also one with a little bit more advanced techniques um, to basically make the build work for you and get you through some of the harder parts of the game. Um, also to take care of some of the harder mob effects. Um, so without further ado, let's get to it. So in this video we're going to talk about the build itself. Um, what makes the bulldozer barb work and you know what it is in general. Um, I named it thus because uh, bulldozers you would think as something real tanky and they could just plow through anything. Well, this is exactly the build that does that. At its best, um, this build allows you to basically run through everything with the Furious Charge um, skill. And the Furious Charge skill is a good one to base your build off of because of the damage uh, multiplier. It's 195% weapon damage per hit. Um, and if you're going through a you know a group of mobs um, it makes short work of them even if your DPS is really low um, what does that usually mean well that means you can use a single hand weapon with the shield and lower your DPS but up your survival rate so this is the contrast between the other popular build of course which is the whirlwind build um, the whirlwind build gets its most um, I would say use out of dual wielding and in that scenario you're going to lose quite a bit of survivability if you don't kill fast enough or if you're fighting mobs that are either kiters or ranged units where you can't continually um, dominate them with the whirlwind build. Um, so generally speaking, um, Furious Charge, if you add the Merciless Assault Rune, it will lower basically your cooldown by two seconds for every target hit and this can be done to eliminate cooldown altogether. Now the text on Merciless Assault is a little bit off because instead of actually hitting five unique targets which one would think from reading the text, it is actually just a um, requirement to have five hits registered during the animation of Furious Charge. So at the beginning of your charge animation to the end of the charge animation, if you could score five hits, you basically will cool down the skill itself to be able to reuse it immediately so that's a huge um, benefit to the skill and most of you will go well how would you do that if you are only fighting you know five people uh, you will have to charge through all of them that's where sprint comes in um, if you have less than five targets to hit um, obviously you can only hit once per charge um, if you're using the furious charge skill sprint will act as a hit mechanism during these charges um, so basically if you guys don't know sprint by itself doesn't generate any hits but if you couple it with run like the wind you basically will get tornadoes um, as you're moving across the map and it's distance based um, the more run speed you have the more tornadoes you get per cast it lasts for three seconds it by default comes with a 40 percent speed boost um, so in effect you should get four tornadoes um, per cast if you ran it all the way through with three seconds um, but with this build, because Furious Charge is a generator, you should be continually casting Sprint while you're charging. Um, and because Charge covers a good distance of, you know, the area of the map, it will leave tornadoes in its wake. Um, so if you have a tornado, obviously like the Whirlwind build, you're generating hits as you go. Um, my thing is, I think with about two mobs, um, so long as you get a tornado in between them, um, they'll usually register one or two hits per charge on on each target. So couple that with the Furious Charge hits, usually with two mobs you, you're going to be in pretty good shape to get a continuous charge going. If it's an elite mob, they're usually bigger. Um, bigger mobs that tend to you know, group up near tornadoes more and tornadoes will be able to hit them more effectively. So at its best, um, the Furious Charge and the Sprint skill they're gonna go ahead and keep you occupied with mobs and you're gonna be running through stuff a lot so um how about the other ones well you know war cry impunity is a staple if you don't run this you're probably you know gimping yourself big time in inferno um, no need to explain this everybody knows what this is about 50 percent resistance even without the armor boost is worth it um, so 
we're going to talk about the primary stat because this is another important one. Um, I would say the primary stat is pretty much optional. You can go with anything that you feel comfortable with. Um, and the reason why I say this is because it depends on play style. Obviously, um, Frenzy is still the preferred single target damage um, skill out there. It makes short work of anything that you're fighting. Um, there's a couple of runes that changes the style Frenzy works. I've played with Sidearm, um, which is great because if you have a single target, Sidearm actually has the axe that hits the primary target um, twice. Comes up to about, if you did the math, about 200 or no, 127%, uh, something like that. Um, I don't have my math in front of me right now, but basically, it's if you're counting Frenzy alone, Sidearm is your most damaging single target Frenzy you can have. Smite is another one that I played with. Um, if you have a fast attack speed somewhere north of 1.5, uh, 1.6, um, you can kind of stun lock anything that you're fighting one versus one. So if you have that kind of a um, attack speed, you can actually proc a lot more life on hit um, safely with Smite. Um, I've gone and actually used Maniac because my armor has now risen to a point where damage isn't a huge deal and I'd rather get the quicker kill speed and Maniac um, helps to add 4% per stack so you can have up to 20% increase in damage a little less than sidearm if you're counting frenzy only but that would tie into furious charge and all the various other skills that you have um, so for this some people have switched it to bash um, it really is what you like I mean primary with this one not a huge deal um, so go with what your heart likes and basically go from there the other skill that I, I really like is I'm um, overpowering this build um, because this build in general requires a little bit of life on hit um, to be successful and obviously right now one of the biggest synergies with life on hit is overpower um, in a build in, in general um, you want to have a few answers to a few things one of which is going to be how you deal with you know um, crowd control one of which is going to be how you deal with AOE um, damage and those are things like Plague, Molten, Desecrator, um, even a little bit on the side of Arcane. Um, with Overpower basically by itself it's just a damage dealer. Um, it has a built-in mechanism for cooldown so if you crit a lot it will actually come back a little bit quicker. Um, has a default 15 second cooldown. I actually have my crit chance up to I believe 34% with my DPS gear I could get it back within about two seconds three seconds if I'm charging through a large mob um, one-on-one -on -one fights I could still get it back within maybe about five to six seconds and with the help of sprint and run like the wind that basically you know it's gonna be one of those skills that you would like to have the reason for is if you add the crushing advanced rune it redirects 30% of incoming melee and range damage for 4 seconds after you activate the skill. The damage portion of overpower, negligent. You don't need it. Furious Charge basically kills everything fast enough. Um, the redirect, however, the text isn't fully explanatory on how the skill works. Um, the 30% incoming damage that you reflect, not only do you reflect it back toward the target, but it also ignores it outright for yourself. So under the um, influence of overpower, you basically are only taking in 70% damage. That's huge. Um, so along with that, um, every single AOE hit that you get usually comes in a form of a very steady stream of damage. And it, it procs almost, I always like to say, 10 times a second, if not more. And every single one of those procs or those hits that you get with overpower reflects back to the target thus also procting life on hit and that in itself is going to overly heal you more than the damage income if your armor holds up um, so if you're standing in molten if you have a plagued enemy you will pop this and literally want to walk into these pools to heal um, if you haven't tried it try it out I mean it doesn't have to be this build but the combination between life on hit and overpower understated one of the easiest way to find out how powerful this is is to fight Gom. Um do it in any act walk into his gas cloud pop this with a good amount of life on hit good amount of resistance you're gonna basically come out laughing um, how strong that is 
but incorporating into this build means that you are quite tanky in most situations and no longer do you have to fear any kind of AoE damage. Um, one of the alternates to you know, the popular whirlwind builds will incorporate overpower. I tend to agree that's probably one of the better methods um, of using that build just purely for the fact that you don't want to be dodging all the time. Uh, especially if they're kiters uh, and you're gonna be chasing them in molten for quite a bit um, but more on the last skill now is gonna be leap I don't think I've ever made any single build myself without the use of leap leap is a hard counter to a lot of things and we talked about like you know crowd controlled and things like that leap is a hard counter to illusionists and also wallers um, both of which are main reasons I think most classes get killed. Um, Waller for me ever since I started playing Barb has been a joke. Um, they never were able to trap you if you have leap available. So leap in the sense of this build, um, I'm using Iron Impact and that's you know one of the first skills you get with leap um, or one of the first runes you get. People who've played a Barb pretty well familiar with this because the tank build um, from way back pre-patch um, the only build that kind of progressed barbs to begin with um, built their entire build around skills like iron impact ignore pain um, with this build it's basically the tanky part of the the bulldozer barb so the other side of it outside of the glamorous you know furious charge we're also incorporating a lot of tanky elements so people who are transferring from that tanky build um, basically they should have very little issues transferring over because you still retain a lot of that tankiness the one versus one um, ability and also now you're just coupling it with a very powerful combination between furious charge and sprint um, a lot of the tanky players however they, they will um, spam leap and although that's great and it ups your survivability it, it takes away from the utility that leap gives you um, for one example is if you're playing in the archives there's chances for you to leap away from an entire fight just skipping over the terrain um, you can do so also in act 3 a little bit earlier parts of it where you're lighting the actual flames there's gaps in the actual map where you can leap over and totally avoid the entire fight and then reset and go back in um, wallers once again illusionists if they're fast and they surround you um, I always urge people when they're playing this build to save leap. Leap should be an escape more so than an attack, but there are situations where leap can be useful and during one-on-one -on -one fights where you're absolutely safe from any containment, then please by all means you know, spam leap to be the tank build that you're used to. Um, so those are the active skills that make it work and we're going to go to the passives now. Before I go into detail with most of these passives, I'm just going to say one thing about um, this center skill here, Toughest Nails. Um, most people here will be familiar with Toughest Nails and Nerves of Steel, and there's a good thread on Reddit right now where they're talking about the most used you know, builds and skills, and these two guys here are staple for hardcore players, and rightfully so because they up your defensive ability. The only thing is they do it differently and if you look at Nerves of Steel which is still a very popular skill, actually more popular than Toughest Nails right now, um, what it does is basic. It's 100% of your vitality turns into armor. If you stack of it, if you have like 70, 80k worth of it, then by all means please use this because it's usually going to give you more armor um, as you're going. Secondly though, if you look at this, um, Toughest Nails, it's going to increase your armor by 25%. And that might not seem like much, however, you got to remember, as a barb, we're expected to stack strength. Because strength is going to double as an increase in damage and also an increase in your armor. Um, the thorns portion of this passive, negligible, once again, damage is not going to be required on that. You don't want to get hit in Inferno anyways, even as a barb, tanky or not. Um, you want to avoid as many hits as possible, so forget that part. However, if you are looking at your barb now, um, let's say you have 1,000 strength. It's going to give you 250 um, of that purely based on strength alone. That's before all your armor pieces added together. If you look at that in Nerves of Steel, you're going to not only need 250 just to balance out on the strength part of it, but it does nothing for you on the other pieces of armor. So if you have armors that's like five to 600 per piece, um, you're going to get 25% of that. If your base armor is 3,000 per se, you're getting 750 plus the 250 from the strength, you basically have yourself 1,000 extra armor. Um, so 
no need to further you know explain this but please go ahead and if you're still using nerves of steel right now click this and just double check your armor rating whichever one's the higher one use that one um, but most of you will probably be surprised once you start taking an amethyst um, in this build because it will allow you to and put in rubies in its place you will like this passive a little bit more than um, nerves of steel so the reason why you choose this obviously for you know survivability um, you can go without it if you're going whirlwind but once again this is based toward more um, survival than it is full-on attack um, so the other skill that I like is superstition I know a lot of people forego this skill um, I'm puzzled as to why because if you look at it it reduces all non-physical damage by 20 percent and it might not seem like much in many situations but you gotta remember if you're playing a barb you're most likely dying to things like arcane molten um, desecrator you're rarely dying from things like an archer um, you're rarely dying from things like say a fallen you know or anything like that um, you're gonna be fighting occultist um, those are those fat round goat guys in area crater um, they have attacks that hurt like hell um, the other thing what it is is it generates fury for you whenever you're in AOE damage and or getting hit by range attack it's a chance too but it's a very good chance so if you're running around in plague or you're standing in it with overpower it's basically going to refuel your uh, fury cost or your fury pull um, sprint's the only spender kind of in this skill set um, so you don't really need a lot of fury but every little bit helps um, so superstition for me one of the reasons why I choose it is because it's a 20% reduction in damage for all of those painful, painful things. You can, in lieu of this, some people will choose Nerves of Steel and Toughest Nails. You know what? That's good, but this is a build where you require very little of it. I've gone as low as like 24,000 um, hit points and actually cleared Act 3. Um, and I'll explain more of that in the gearing you know, portion of the, the tutorial. But Superstition is 20% reduction in all those damages that count and no matter how much armor and resistances that you gain the higher the mob level the harder it is to mitigate that damage and having a flat 20 percent to me makes more sense i've ran with it ran without it i've ran with uh you know nerves of steel in its place by far this is you know without doing any math or hard data though by feel and and you know in inferno a lot of times you could do all the math you like but it's about how comfortable you are superstition makes me more consistent of a player by ignoring a lot of those damages not only that but once again if you couple superstition with overpower the healing um, of overpower is only so great because it's a a percentage of your life on hit however by mitigating the damage that is done by these aoe's you are now healing more um, for every proc that it hits so this is a very good combination along with life on hit i i fully recommend it i mean if you guys haven't tried it out um please do because you'll notice a huge huge increase in survivability and uh, that's against a lot of things and the last one ruthless so out of the two passives this i would say is the optional one um the reason why i say that is because ruthless is just purely here for a couple of things one is crit chance to lower the cooldown of overpower um, the crit damage usually is going to overcome weapon masters as far as an outright damaging skill. Um, this skill here basically is going to be, um, you know, a useful passive while you're charging. It's it's a good DPS adder. Um, however, if you feel that you know your armor isn't exactly the ten to one ratio, feel free to swap it out for nerves of steel if your crit chance is higher. You know, passively just by having items, um, you don't need the extra crit help. Nerves of steel is another good thing to replace it with. Um, there isn't too many things on the actual passives list that I would say is going to be a you know, big help um, to this build. So if you were to swap out Ruthless, I would say Weapon Master if you want to cool down over power a little bit more um, and lose a little bit of DPS in the process or just go with Nerves of Steel. If you are running with a lot of good gear with a lot of life on hit or life steal, I mean, instead of life on hit, then you might want to give Bloodthirst a try, but I honestly don't know how good that is because I don't have the DPS to make it really shine. Um, no need for animosity and things like that, so we're not going to cover anything else that doesn't make sense here. Um, I have, however, ran with a variant with Berserker Rage, 
um, for some boss fights when I was under geared um, with a challenge that I proposed to myself and I, I'll work that in in the gearing part of the video but the mainstay of my build um, the way that I run it normally it's gonna be with ruthless so that's a gist of how everything works um, if you haven't seen the build in action um, I would suggest maybe you take a look at my YouTube channel um, of course if you found this video you just click my my name there and then you'll be taken to the channel and you could look at a lot of um, different fights that I've had in Act 3 where I ran through it um, the first time that I presented the build and, and you can kind of gauge yourself how this build works in action um, so I'm gonna save this portion of it as a first part if you you know are kind of intrigued and you want to know how to get started with this build um, follow me in the next video it's gonna be the gearing portion so I'll see you then thank you very much